talk about multiplying by six. So sometimes multiplication facts with six seem like they might be tricky, but actually we have so many strategies that we can use to help us figure out any fact that has a six in it. So let's just discuss a few different ways that we might solve a sixes fact. One strategy is that we can think of something nearby that we know. So a nearby fact. So let's say that we are trying to solve six times four. Now, what if I start with five times four? Because I know that five groups of four makes 20. Do you see the five groups of four here? There's five groups with four in each group. So that makes 20, doesn't it? And if you look really close, this looks like an array over here. So there's five, five groups of four, sorry, and that makes 20. So when we want to figure out what six groups of four makes, we're just going to add one more group of four. So if we had 20, and now we're adding one more group of four, what do we have? We have 24. So let's take a look at how we could do that with another one. Let's figure out six times nine. So first of all, what we could do is figure out what five groups of nine is. Maybe we already know that fact. Maybe we know that five groups of nine makes 45. So then what are we going to do to make six groups of nine? We could just add one more group of nine. And so that is going to be nine more than 45. So six times nine will be 54. Now, what if we asked ourselves, what is six the double of? So if we are trying to figure out, let's say we're trying to figure out six times eight. Well, if we know what half of this is, we could figure out the product by doubling. And let me show you what I mean. So if I know that three times eight makes 24, so I have three rows of eight and that's 24, what do I have to do to get six rows of eight? I just have to double this, don't I? Because I've got three rows, I just wanna put three more rows. So I doubled the amount of beads. So I could double this product. So 48 is the double of 24. Let's do one more like that so that you can see the relationship between three and six. So now this will be a pretty easy one. You might know it already, but let's suppose that we are trying to solve six times three or six groups of three. We could start out by trying to solve three groups of three. So there's one, two, three groups of three. And we know that that makes nine. So how could we use this to solve this? What are we doing to our groups? We had three groups, but we want six groups. So we are doubling the groups. And if we doubled the number of groups, we doubled the number of objects, didn't we? We doubled the amount of beads. So what's the double of nine? 18. So you can see that three times three is half of six times three. So remember, when you're multiplying, you can try to look for lots of different connections between what you already know and what you're trying to figure out. So if you ever get stumped on a multiplication fact, just ask yourself, what do I know? And then try to use what you know to figure out the answer to what you're trying to figure out. So let's go through the sixes facts. Now I'm going to talk about a few strategies that I might use as we go through the facts, but the strategies that you might use might be very different and that's completely fine because it's wonderful that we all use different strategies that work well for us. So when I solve six times one, I already know that anything times one is itself, so I know that this is six. 
For six times two, I'm going to think to myself, okay, well, I know that I could also write this as two times six, couldn't I? And that helps me think of this as the double of six. So this is going to be 12. For six times three, I might think to myself, okay, well, I know that two times six is 12, so three times six is going to be one more group of six, so it'll be 18. Six times four. Now, do you remember what we learned for a strategy when we multiply by four? Well, in that one, we can double the double. So if you didn't learn that make, yet, make sure you go back and watch the video for the fours. But what we're doing, I'm going to think about this like four times six because we know the product will be the same, won't it? So I can start with two groups of six and I know that that's 12. And then I can make just another two groups of six because I'm doubling the amount of groups. And that gives me another 12. And this gives me 24. So I know that six times four is 24. Now six times five. For this one, I'm going to use what I know about fives. So I know that I can start with the tens fact. I could think to myself, 10 times six is 60. So five times six is going to be half of that because I'm taking away half of the rows. So it's going to be 30 because 30 is half of 60. Now six times six, I remember that from when I learned the square facts, a six by six array makes a perfect square and that was 36. Six times seven, what could I think for this one? Well, I might think to myself, okay, I know that five groups of seven makes 35. And then I'll just add one more group of seven to make 42. For six times eight, hmm, how could I solve six times eight? Well, maybe I know that five groups of eight makes 40, and then I'll just add one more group of eight to make 48. And now I'm just left with six times nine and six times 10. Now I'm going to start with six times 10 because I know that's 60. And if I have six times nine, that's just going to be six less than 60. Because let's look at how this works. I had, t I can think of this as 10 times six as well, right? So I can think of this as 10 groups of six. Now I have nine groups of six, so I'll take away one group of six to make 54. So sometimes the way I think about these, I just turn, I just um, switch the factors around in my mind. So instead of six times 10, I might think to myself 10 times six, because we know that when we multiply, we can change the factors around and it doesn't affect the product. It still gives us the same product. So there are some strategies for the sixes facts. Like I said, if you solved them a different way, that's wonderful, or if you just knew them, that's wonderful too. As long as you always have a strategy that you can fall back on, that is the goal. So I hope you enjoyed this video and make sure to check back for more very soon.